And that's what I'm talking about, acceptance. Acceptance of what is. And now, the river of life is, is taking me into another direction. Can I accept it? Or I am angry or I have expectations with life that it shouldn't be here. It shouldn't be like this. It should be the way I thought it should be. And this is basically even a lot of people on spiritual path are really struggling with it because we're having an idea. I have a lot of people, a lot of people on the spiritual path com coming to me and have an idea of how life should be, have an idea of a utopian way of life that, okay, the government it sucks, the system sucks, I'm angry with this, I'm angry with that, things should not be that way, and things should go in a direction that I think is better. Like, there should be more healers, there should be more conscious people out there, we should stop slaughtering the animals, we should stop destroying the... Uh, uh, our forests and polluting the water and I have an idea of how things should be they should be this way and they're just not going in the direction I want them to go so what happens is I begin to to suffer isn't isn't this how it is when things really don't go the way you you expect them to go or you want them to go that's isn't that how you normally suffer is there anyone who wants to yeah, hi, Rosalie. Hi. You don't need to suffer if things don't go your way because what you're looking for is inside and you're not outside. So you can change it yourself. Well, change it yourself to what? To the better. If it's a thing that makes you suffer, you have to turn it around yourself. Not any other can do it for you. No, nobody can do it for you. That's absolutely right. So if something is not going your way, right? You may not be able to change it any other way. But no. when you begin to understand acceptance of what is, acceptance, you you're, you're come to this place of more of an attitude to be surrendered to what is in life. And that doesn't mean that you're not really trying to make things right and good, and you're not striving to improve your life. But in the meantime, you have developed awareness to this place that you see if the flow of life is not going in the direction you want it you want it to go or you think it should go, you can accept it as, as this is what is, what is going on. And then in that attitude and that type of mentality, it's very difficult to suffer. You must understand that it happens in life. It depends, you know, I don't know, everyone, we all have our own uh, individual karma and path and the direction we need to go. But I experienced this many times that doors close down. They get shut down in my face. And naturally, my first reaction is, oh, wow, what happened? Why did this happen? Oh, no. You know, that's the first reaction, natural reaction comes or I try to save it or change it or whatever. But then there's quickly this other part which is, comes in, it comes from this place of pure understanding of, okay, this is really not happening anymore. And existence just closed this door. And then when life is closing one door, if you just stay put, stay still, and not be in this place of really 
reaction and stay in your meditation, there may be a period of a gap that nothing is happening, nothing else is opened up. And it's a little bit scary because something has shut down, but something else is going to open up because that's how it is. That's how existence works. Your life will close one door and opens up another door. So if you stay put and just relax for whatever period of time you need to, then you see another door opens up for you. And sometimes it's immediate, as one is closing, another one opens up. But if you start to look at the fact that the entire existence is perfect, life is perfect. It's not perfect in your eyes because things are not the way you want them to be, but it's perfect in God's eyes. It's perfect in, in its essence the way it is. Then if a door closes, another door opens up. Something else will come for you. You must understand one thing which is very vital. And you have to keep that in the center, center point of your psyche is that not, not nine of us, as much as it appears to be, it looks like it, that we are disconnected and we're not connected to the one mind, one, one conscious mind, the grand mind. Even though we're not feeling it and touching it, and at times we don't feel connected to it, but we, and there are times that we have glimpses of it, and there are beings in this life that have reached that, and they totally feel the connection, okay? You must understand that everything is connected to everything. Everything is connected to everything. Even the worst evil human being or entity is connected through the oneness to the both best, beautiful, divine being in the world. Are you with me? You need to pay attention to this part. Everything is interweaved to everything. All of it is connected. It's all a part of the oneness. And you are a part of the oneness. And you are the oneness. You are a part of the oneness. And you are the oneness. Yes, the mind doesn't really understand. But what do you mean? I am a part of the oneness. And I am the oneness. But it's okay. You don't really need to understand it with your mind. Because the mind can't understand the infinite, infinity. 